What's up everybody? Welcome to a tutorial here on the Eric's YouTube channel. Um, I have been given the honors to uh, host this uh, tutorial today. Um, it's kind of a special one because it's a fly I'll be tying on the new uh, SA210, uh, the Bob Clauser minnow hook, um, which is a hook that has been developed uh, with Bob himself. So really, really cool uh, just to uh, have a hook um, developed in cooperation with Bob. So the one we're tying today is a, um, I guess it's a flat wing crafter, uh, bait fish uh, kind of thing, a streamer. Um, so let's jump straight to it here. As I said, the hook is the new SA210. Get some thread on here. Then I want to start off by tying in some of this chartreuse craft fur. I want to tie that in on top of the hook, facing forward like this. Trim off what you don't need and flip this back over on itself still making sure that it's on top of the hook this will um, secure the craft fur from getting pulled out uh, when you fish it or uh, if a fish should bite the tail here and also it would it will uh, provide some lift on the tail as well, so it, does, it, so it doesn't uh, tangle up on the hook bend. Then I want to tie in some of these um, grizzly flat wings here. These I want to be a little bit longer than the craft fur. So let's get those in. side there. Trim this off. Same thing for the other side. Get one in. What you can do here is to make a few loose wraps and then just pull the feather backwards like this, allowing you to uh, adjust the length without the feather turning on you. So move forward a little bit, tighten that up. And here you can see it sitting nicely there. Turn this off. Go forward with the tying thread to just something like six millimeters from the hook eye. Then get some dubbing of some sort. This is a pearl flash, flasher boot dubbing. Get that in on the thread here. And then just cover the hook shank here, the bare shank, all the way back to where you tied in your craft fur and the feathers. And the reason for doing it this way around is uh, I want to cover up the hook shank um, so it doesn't shine through when the fly gets wet. So I always like to uh, put in a base layer before um, covering the hook entirely. This gives me something to uh, brush out afterwards. It's better to have too much than too little. Like so. So just stop right around this point. Make 
sure the shank is covered with a tying thread so your materials don't spin on you. Then grab a piece of gray craft fur and kind of measure that out. You don't want it to be longer than the chartreuse here. We'll measure that out. Tie this in on top of the hook or the top half actually. Like this, spread it out a little bit. And while you're still holding this, trim that off. Like that. Don't mind uh, the rest here. Well, it will be covered. Turn the fly around in the vise. And here you can see it, I've tied it in only on the top half of the hook. Grab some white. Do the same thing. And here you can use the gray uh, to measure out the length, which is just right around here. And then tie that white crafter in on the bottom half here. And this should give you a really nice separation of the two materials when you flip those around. Like so, kind of have to work a little bit with it here. Then make sure you're all the way up to the hook eye. I actually think I want to tie in a little bit more dubbing here just to cover up things. So let's get some more dubbing on there. Then get yourself uh, a pen or a reverse tool if you have one and then just let me just flip the fly back around so it's the normal way up. Let's see if everything's okay. It looks like it is. Then flip this entire jungle of craft fur here back on itself. make one or two those turns my thread slipped off right there so you can see it's not always super easy when you're using a GSP thread like the one I'm using it is strong but it's also very slippery I think I caught it now good. So let me just try and it slipped again. Let's do that one more time. There we go. Let me get that quick finish in before uh, this happens again. So get a quick finish in. One will be enough. Cut the tie thread and then just have a look how oh, everything is sitting here. So now's the time to brush out a little bit of that dubbing underneath. Just to get some some flash material or some flash fibers to shine through. Like that. Now this is coming along very, very nice. The 
place a drop of UV resin on your finger or on your uh, dubbing needle if you don't like to put this on your fingers and then just work in that resin in the front part of the fly here uh, and this is just to uh, to help to help get control under uh, or off the entire fly here see it here so work with it just a little bit careful here grab the materials push them forward just a little bit before curing it and that will give you the perfect head shape here So if you look at it from the top, it has a nice teardrop shape to it. And now uh, the fly isn't going anywhere and you can really easily work with it here. So put a drop of glue on the side here where you want the eye. And this fly is getting a six millimeter eye, so it's fairly big. that and this is uh, obviously the glue won't uh, harden uh, in the back of the eye there but uh, it will harden around the edges so this step is just to uh, it's just to uh, help me put in the eyes where I want them there's just nothing more annoying than these eyes sliding around and not staying put. So once you're happy with it, just cure that as well. There we go. And now to build up a small head fly so this step will secure the eyes so they don't get torn off when a fish grabs it just take your time with this keep the fly moving Make sure you cover the eyes. You can even go a bit further back here. Like I'm doing. And also by applying that first layer with your uh, finger or your dubbing needle at first um, will ensure uh, that you get a kind of a, a crust you could say around the fly so uh, this fly isn't all too heavy because this layer won't soak through because of the first layer so the head is actually hollow and the fly will therefore not be as heavy So the trick here to any resin head fly actually is just to keep it moving like I'm doing right now. And with your, when you're happy with the shape, just cure that resin with your lamp. Make sure you give it a good sap so everything is hardened, it is now. And here you can really see that um, chartreuse shining through. And that there is the finished fly. Thank you for uh, tuning in and watching this tutorial. 
Um, I was happy to be your host tonight, so please uh, remember to subscribe to the Eric's YouTube channel. Um, hit the like button, uh, leave some comments if uh, you like this uh, video, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye.